Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content for uh, Informer Farmer Intelligence's uh, Insights Portfolio. I'm here in, uh, in San Francisco at the Biotech Showcase uh, where the industry gets to, uh, together with the uh, investors and, and, and potential partners to sort of look forward to you know, what's going to go on in the year, sort of share views, uh, explain to each other you know, how things are going. But there are lots of different stakeholders and, and, and sometimes those are stakeholders who are actually sort of uh, around sort of the patient groups. We're seeing a lot more sort of you know, patient centricity um, on behalf of pharmaceutical industries. I'm joined by Jamie Haywood, who is the uh, co-founder of Patients Like Me, and you guys have uh, been doing some uh, some pretty interesting things recently. Could you first sort of just explain your know, Patients Like Me, you know, what its role is? Sure. So, so I'm a mechanical engineer. I got into medicine because my brother was diagnosed with motor neuron disease, and you know what. Going with my brother through this journey of you know, this deadly disease that I have no hope from and trying to figure out how to cure it and manage it, uh, I, I started a research institute that's, that's still going and it's the largest in the world. And this came out of the realization that, that at some level, the system's designed to serve everybody but the patient. You know, we, we serve, you know, you, you know this serves the pharmaceutical companies, it serves the academics, the, the, the hospital systems, you know, are, are have these things. But the patients, at the end of the day, the connection to the opportunity that's emerging in the world is missing. And then, the, and then how you solve problems in the real world, like you're a patient, you're facing a challenge in your life, a challenge in your home. Where do you go for answers? And the answer is a patient just like you has that answer. But more than just some communications portal, we realized it wasn't about conversation, it was about data. How do we digitize human experience so that you can go across and say, look, who's someone else with depression and spasticity? And, and are they managing it well? And does a drug work for both of those in combination? So that's the data system. And it's not a young company. We've been around for 12 years. We've been building this that long. And of course, it doesn't have to be just a therapeutic solution. It could be anything. I mean, any kind of experience. And, and, and we have data on things like you know, people that use marijuana. We have one of the richest databases on the benefits of that in the world because it's the kind of data that isn't anywhere else. So, so this is something that then you, you then interact with, for example, pharmaceutical companies or, or healthcare providers. How does that work? So the, the pharmaceutical industry is probably one of the, 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 the largest spenders on research to understand the human condition. But it's always targeted to their purpose. And so our insight was to say, let's solve this, the patient's problem. You know, what's the patient's journey? What are the deal, issues they deal with? What are the unmet needs? All of that. And then rather than the way we do it now, which is take a, a single pharma's solution and purpose and try and identify the needs that it can work for, but we said, but let's identify all the patient's needs. And then we'll give that information back to the pharma. So it's, it's the other way around. It's the patient-centered. And then the, and, the, and the companies get to learn from the patient's needs directly as partners. And that's very transparent. It's part of the process from the beginning. So and, and so the business model is that they, they pay for access to that, 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 that information? Yeah, well, it, it, it's more insights. So, so our team, they, 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 you know, we do, we, do, we do sell the data and we do that. But mostly, our, our job is to understand what are the complications or issues that relate to developing a drug. How do you demonstrate value? And then we use our platform and our patients with them to help solve that problem to accelerate development, reduce the risk. So just recently, uh, you did a, a deal with a Chinese company, iCovinex, uh, which also involved a hundred million dollar investment. So, so how does how does that sort of square with? You know what you're doing. I mean, what you can and what you can do with a hundred million. Well, it's it's actually even bigger than the hundred million. So so um, you know, it, it, we could, it is a Chinese company, but it's really about the people involved. So so uh, the the founder of iCarbonX is a scientist named Jun Wang, yeah. and he was the founder of the Beijing Genome Institute, and he's an artificial intelligence trained expert, and he realized that. In order for us to advance our understanding of human health, we had to go beyond genomics. We had to go beyond thinking about sort of lifetime risk and go into understanding the state of biology. How do we understand how you are right now? Each of us is going through a journey in our life, a journey from our birth to our ultimate death. And it's the understanding of what's the interaction of health, disease, and aging in that journey. That, that, that combination. So you don't know where you are on that journey. You don't have a location. I don't know where I am. 
the technologies that we're assembling, the ability to understand where you are from your experience, how you feel, your environment, and then the biology of where you are, your proteome, your, 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 your immune system, your antibody signature, this information says where you are now. And, and if we map enough people, just like putting GPS on a real map, we begin to understand how you get from point to point. So how you go from disease to non-disease, how you go from healthy to healthier, how you go from, you know, how you reduce the rate of aging to reduce the chance of disease and make our lives better. And he built iCarbonX to do that. And, and then we've been working together now for 18 months to look at technologies that are truly capable of assessing and digitizing the human condition so that we can understand what health disease and aging are at scale. And we're, we're a core center of that ecosystem, which is how do you work with half a million people to understand their health and solve problems? But the other elements are you know, digitized proteomics, somologic, digitized immunology, health tell. Uh, we invested in a microbiome platform called GALT that is able to do you know, cultivation and, 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 and develop the kind of biome we need to make ourselves healthy. But the, the goal is to build an ecosystem that allows us for the first time to understand where we are in health and the journey to be healthier. All right. So that's so 100 million. You're going to use that to acquire you know, other platforms. Or? We, so, so we've been adding biocomputing capability to our team. We've been recruiting scientists with that capability. Um, we've actually developed the ability to to go into a patient's home and draw blood, so we can completely virtually work with a patient. If they're feeling worse, let's say you you're, you're having a particularly bad side effect, you can hit a button. We can come and draw blood in your house and then understand the biology of that side effect. It, it, it accelerates the loop of science from, that's a hypothesis, to now it's data right now in one ecosystem. So in terms of you know, your vision then, th this, th this money is going to accelerate? Dramatically accelerate it. I mean, and, and, and I think you're, you're just seeing this get started. I mean, the disruptions come when technologies become transformative, like the ones I described. But they come when something else happens, when we ask a different question. And right now, healthcare is about how does a hospital make money? How does a pharmaceutical produce a better, more patented molecule? But you can imagine a world where, like what happened in technology, is that the, it was shifted to the patient. So imagine you as an individual, we have your digitization, and, and you have some place you want to be, a little healthier, a little happier, or you want to get rid of some issue in your life. That becomes a biology, a, an equation about a biology shift you need to do. You put out this proposal to the world and say, here's the biology I need, and everyone else competes to deliver that to you, and we deliver value that way. So, so is, is your customer then going to be the patients rather than these other members? of this ecosystem. You're going to see a shift. I mean, you know, the, 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 the initial customers are those that benefit most from new innovation. So it'll be the pharmaceutical and the biotech industry, and we work with them now. And it'll be, how do we help them reduce the risk of development, better targeting, lower chances of either tolerability or, or serious adverse events um, in a holistic, integrated way. Um, ultimately, it will go to being things that become part of human health itself. And, and the technology chosen can go down in cost. Patients like me is an extremely cost-effective way to relate to human beings. You know, the technologies can become cheaper. So you can imagine a world that, yes, you draw the blood and it's done, or, or urine or other samples. Your relationships becomes fully virtual in that context. But that's, the, that's a long vision. That's going to take, I mean, I've been at this for 17 years. I'm probably still going to be at this in 17 more. All right. Great. Well, well Jamie, um, Thanks for, for stopping by and, and, and telling us the story. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's, it, I'm looking forward to this.